This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. for joining me for another episode of the bring back soul music podcast my special 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 guest today is a member of what i consider the first family of music the jacksons i'm speaking to mr tito jackson mr jackson how you doing today sir i don't do any better man it was so hot yesterday here in las vegas and it's beautiful today so i'm happy i hear you brother so you in vegas huh yes sir all right. All right. Well, uh, I know we're kind of pressed for time. I'm not going to uh, make this long. Let's get right into it. You have a uh, a new album out, which uh, I got my copy right here. Um, oh, cool. Uh, it's called Under Your Spell. And I got to tell you, man, um, this was a fun album to listen to. And uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, now, this is your sophomore album. Um, yes. And I went back and listened to your first album, and this one is completely different than that yeah. first album. Um, talk to us about the process of putting this uh, putting this project together. Well, it's funny because this album was supposed to have been my first album. Oh, okay. Why? Why I say that? I said, or, or always said that if I do an album, it's going to be a blues album. But what enticed me to do that first album is for the fan base, because they had a survey saying, would Tito do an album that was 50-50? So I'm going to say, I'll give the fans what they want, you know. But this time, I wanted to do it for myself. I had a few songs, you know, that, that I had started and put away. You know, like Big Black Woman, you know, that song is not a brand new song that I had written recently. Um, George Benson, Eric Demmer, the producer on that, was in the B.B. King band when I was traveling with them. Uh, and he had said something about, great idea, let's do this contri tribute to B.B. Call that King, B.B.'s daughter was also on the show. And um, our stagehand was a friend of uh, George Vincent's. I had met George about five years ago here in Las Vegas uh, on the show, the Jackson Brothers, and George was on the same bill. And we talked about possibly hooking up someday. But it came for real when uh, uh, the stagehand said, George wants us to swing by and say, hey, what's happening, you know? Uh, uh, we were on our way to Nevada, Reno. George lives in Arizona. Uh, uh, so I hadn't started this contribute. We had invited George to guitar on it. And of course, he is more than anxious, you know. So he hit us up on, 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 on the album. And and uh, Colette and I went and killed the vocals at the same time that while he was playing the guitar. So we had, had three tracks for him, one for me, one for Colette, and one for George. And we did what we did, bam. Now, the other songs, you know, uh, some of them were written by me and my uh, co-writer, co co uh, uh, producer, friend, Michael Jackson is his name, not my brother now. I don't know what you think I'm going crazy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he uh, had written a, a few songs and I added my little flavors to it. And then we continued. Then COVID set in. And, and meanwhile, all, all this going on 
I'm still traveling the world, you know, playing with my brothers, doing shows on my own or whatever. Uh, COVID seven, now that's, you know, nobody six feet distance and all these other crazy things. I came to Las Vegas to my home here to hibernate and had nothing to do. And I remember that you could send files to a computer, you know, no matter what they are. So I said to myself, who knows when this COVID thing's over? I have nothing to do. What better time to record and invite some of my colleagues and friends to sing along? You know, Eddie Levert lives right here in Las Vegas. I had seen him a couple of times times I called him up and got his favorite, you know, that we talked about in the past. Mike Ziedel, uh, the owner of the company I'm on, he knew Joe Bonamassa. Of course, you know, Marlon and Kenny and and these guys, you know, I had uh, 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 divvies on them. So it, it wasn't a very, very difficult project or process to put to put that together. Because these guys couldn't lie. They couldn't say, oh, man, I got a show. Uh, I'm on tour right now. They could tell me that. I knew they were quarantined with nothing to do. You know, so that's that's how that process came. You know, and I sent the project to my engineer over in the Houston, Texas to mix the songs. I sent it in to Gabriel in uh, uh Clarksdale, Mississippi, to Matt Jacksonville, Mississippi, to master it. And there you have it. Turned it in. Got the album. Call Stevie up. Because uh, the song that he's on was the last song that was written by me and my partner called uh, Love One Another. Because we wanted something on the album that spoke about all this BS that's happening in the world today with the Black Lives Matter and Storm in the Capitol and these different groups and the Republicans and the Democrats going in each other and other parts of the world's having the same similar kind of things with the Black Lives and all this other crap. I saw say, we need to stop and just love one another, you know? You know, so that's where that idea came from and I said it would be great to have Stevie do his harmonica on here, you know, just to give it that flavor, you know, in his reach. So when you hear her harmonica, you pay attention, you know, and it's yeah. all about getting attention from people, right. with the, you know. Okay. Well, yeah, I, uh, that's um, Love One Another is actually the video that I guess is out currently. Um, and you got cameos by just about everybody. Um, but I thought that was the overall theme of the album as well, was just, um, you know, relationships and whether it was on a personal level or, you know, a worldly relationship or. Um, so I thought that was kind of the theme of the uh, of the album, which was great, by the way. Um, so this is the album that you originally wanted to do, and I think you succeeded. Um, now, you spoke about COVID um, briefly. Um yeah, I, I guess you can't really do anything and like in terms of touring until COVID is through. Um, are there any other music that you're working on since you're like since we're all like homeward bound or homebound? Yeah, this yeah, I'm always working on music or projects or what have you to do with music. Uh, but uh, uh, I have a few shows. Matter of fact, well, I have a show in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, and Kansas this weekend. You know, it's the first time I've worked in a year and a half. You know, I uh, had doing any concerts, so uh, it's not my show. It's Mike Zito's show. I'm a, just a feature because this new album. I'm going out to promote it. I guess you could say, but you know, uh, it's going to be nice to get on stage. For a moment, you know, and I'm lo really looking forward to that. Okay. Um, now, I said I thought the, the album was about relationships. What do you want people to take away from this uh, this project? 
Well, my whole idea of this album, especially with songs like Love One Another, I wanted to reach as many people as I possibly can. That's why I felt it was important to have my mother to, to start the video out with a little message and, and of course, invite the families who have just as large, if not a larger reach than than my family, you know, and and then to have other celebrities, your Magic Johnsons and Chris Tucker and and uh, Denise Williams and Deborah Cox and all these other celebrities to participate, their fan base to reach. Remember to love the one another. Their reach, all these reaches put together, can reach a lot of people. So that was my main thing, you know. So with this whole thing, okay, and, yeah. And I noticed in the, in the album, you also dedicated the album to your to your mom, which I thought was great. Yes, yes, I dedicated the complete album to my mom and my mom only because uh, she's been so the light in my life and the inspiration and love in my life. And, you know, who don't love their mother to death? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So you got shows coming up this weekend and hopefully, um, you know, COVID will get done doing this thing and you can get, get out there. I would recommend that, um, that uh, everyone pick up your uh, your album under your spell it's, like I said it was just a fun album to listen to um, thank you I love all the tracks on there love one love one another obviously but also like uh, Big Leg Woman oh wow yeah that's one of my favorites as well it was just a it was just a good album to listen to and it sort of took me back to um, some of the uh, some of the older stuff from um, you know the 70s and the eighties. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, when, when I listened to it, I felt like I was like in a, in a juke joint. Um, oh, cool, man. <laughs> so like I said, it's a fun album. I recommend everyone go pick it up. We'll have links in the show notes to Amazon and, uh, you can order through Amazon. We don't get anything for it. Um, and if you got prime, you get it in two days. So, um, Mr. Jackson, I appreciate you. I know we kind of pressed for time. Um, Thank you, Todd. Yeah. Anything else you want to say in closing? Well, Todd, I'd just like to say, you know, to you and all the millions of fans that bought my music, you know, my family, you know, because without you, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be doing this. So thank you for all your love and support. Yeah, no problem, man. And good luck with the album, man. I think once people actually get a chance to listen to it, I think they'll enjoy it just as much as I did. Thank you, Todd. I'm glad you like it. No Thank problem, you very sir. Much. All right. You take care. That's Peace and, and love to you. Same to you, sir. That's Tito Jackson, and we'll be right back. We'll continue our episode after this message. Hey, folks, we'll get back to our interview in just a minute, but I wanted to let you know about a new series we're starting at BringBackSoulMusic.com called The Best Of. Here we take a look at singers, songwriters, record producers, record companies, and we try to rank their top 10 songs of all time. First episode is premiering Wednesday, September 8th at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on YouTube. Here's a sneak peek of episode number one. <music> Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special, special guest today um, is a talented uh, group who is one of my favorites. I'm speaking to the members of After Seven. Guys, how are you doing today? 
Good. Fantastic. That's great. All right. Hey, man. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, man. Hey, I've been a fan for so long, man. I felt like I should be the fourth member of the group. <laughs> I you, think got some singing skill? you got some skills? Can't sing a lick. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> can't sing a lick. But uh, I've been following you guys for, for years, man. And I think the uh, Taking My Time album, I think I bought that album like three times. Uh, wow. Yeah. I had a buddy who borrowed it, never got it back. I think he might have skipped <laughs> town or something. Um, wow. And then I bought it again. And then when everything went digital, I'm like, I got it again. So, <laughs> okay. uh, but you, you guys have a new album uh, that's scheduled to drop at the time. Uh, in a couple days, so yeah. by the time this interview airs, it's going to be, um, it's already going to be out. That's Unfinished okay. business, and uh, I got a chance to listen to a couple songs um, from the um, from the album. Um, okay. Three of them, I believe it was, and that extra mile, yeah. man, that is classic uh, after seven right there. So, um, <laughs> if the rest of the album, and I just pre-ordered mine. Uh, on Amazon Thank two you. days ago. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate that. Well, I tell you, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan. And uh, let's talk about this new, uh, new project. I know we kind of pressed for time. You guys have been doing interviews quite a bit. Um, how did this all this come about? Um, well, you know, we were just really fortunate uh, uh, to uh, find our way into a studio and start recording during this time of uh, COVID. Uh, we were like many other artists that were out there where um, this kind of, you know, we, we had dates on the books and then all of a sudden everything was frozen and what to do next. And everybody was really kind of scrambling. We, we were like everybody else trying to figure out what is the next move. And a lot of folks, uh, a lot of the artists kind of felt like, uh, you know, this uh, virtual performance thing is the next thing. That's where it's going to. You gotta, you gotta get on, you gotta get on. And, while we felt like, mm, yeah, maybe so, but gosh, you don't really get to connect with the people through virtual, uh, through this uh, virtual performance. And um, we, it just didn't feel like that was the move for us because um, we, we, after seven, you know, after seven, it's not just saying there's a presentation that goes along with that. And um, we thought, well, we could do that or we could pivot and get into the studio. And it just so happened that things kind of all came together in a way that uh, enabled us to, to, to do just that. And we got with a, a producer that I've known for many years, Mr. Damon Thomas, uh, uh, formerly of the Underdogs. And uh, we got in there and we started to uh, kind of carve some things out. We talked about a direction of where we could go and what kind of music we felt would work best for After Seven in this time period. And we wanted to move the, uh, we wanted to move the needle a little bit. And I think um, we were able to do that. I think uh, uh, these other guys here that you're looking at right now, I think they both uh, are thrilled. I think with the final product, we were able to uh, pull together something I think that was pretty masterful in a, in a period of not 35 consecutive days, but a total of 35 days it took for us to record. And we did some unusual things in the process to get there, but uh, we feel good about this, this record Unfinished Business. Okay. Um, Keith, uh, tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the process of, uh, this, this great album that soon to be great album that's going to be released. Well, the, the process kind of, kind of, uh, started between Kevon and Damon Thomas and Damon was out, you know, personally to prove something, uh, to his fan base because he had moved from Los Angeles to Atlanta. And so this would be a, a big project for him to be a part of. And uh, he was determined to put his stamp on the project. I think he ended up recording uh, nine songs out of 12. And um, he sat with Kevon and as Kevon mentioned earlier that, you know, they kind of molded a, a direction and, uh, but not, it wasn't all written or anything. It was just the concept. And Damon is such a consummate uh, producer, and he's his his playing piano playing skills are just phenomenal. So at the drop of a dime, he's able to sit down at the piano and come up with a melody that just blows you away. 
And so we had a lot of confidence in him and what he saw as a direction for us to go, pushing the envelope a little bit, like you mentioned the song, uh, Extra Mile. Um, that's a, a club dance track. And to be honest, we never really had a quote unquote real dance track, but we had up-tempo songs that work for After Seven. And uh, that's one of the, the songs that we push the envelope on. We have uh, dance, uh, like the lion dancing track. We got the steppers track. And then of course we have those ballads that uh, we always seem to uh, bring to the table. But it was really, you know, I think what Kevin and Damon did sitting down kind of forged the direction for where we would go. And of course that brings into mind Danny uh, into the picture because he was new to the group and uh, he kind of blew Damon away the first night in the studio with his skill set. And uh, then as, as each day progressed, it seemed to be rather magical that After Seven still had that sound, even though we didn't have Melvin, we didn't have Jason, but uh, Danny brought to the table uh, a marriage between his voice and Kevin that probably a lot of people uh, would think that you couldn't get close to it. And uh, I think we, we found a way to do that. So, you yeah. know, it's a little God, a little luck, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, when I was in a club, I used to hear after seven, you guys had a bunch of, uh, bunch of club hits, especially I uh, like kicking it. Uh, that's probably my yeah. favorite. <laughs> Wow, that's probably yeah, my favorite that. after seven song. I listen to that in the gym and it just kind of gets me going. So, <laughs> I told you, man, I should be the fourth member of y'all group. I can't <laughs> sing a lick, but uh, <laughs> hey, Danny, you're the uh, you're the new guy. Um, were you a after seven fan before you uh joined the group? Oh man, most definitely. Uh, after seven is uh, one of my musical influences, man, growing up and everything. I um you know, I, I mentioned a story to Kevon. I think I mentioned it to Keith too, that um, I recall like there's so many times I wanted to sing after seven songs, but not by myself. It ain't, ain't right by yourself. You got to do it with a group of dudes. You know what I'm saying? That way you can, you know, you know, sing to the ladies and whatnot. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, right. But every time, every time I would uh, bring it up to uh, a few of my, you know, vocal buddies, Nobody would want to, you know, uh, step up because everybody, uh, <laughs> everybody got intimidated with taking Gavon's part. So, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, it, it never, it never got to happen then. But, you know, as God saw fit, it's happening now. So I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm blessed, man. Okay. What do, what do you think you bring to the, uh, to the group? Because like you said, it was a, um, a threesome before. Uh, now yeah. you're the third person. What do you, uh, what do you think you bring to, uh, to After Seven? Um, wow, that's, that's, that's a good question. Um, what I bring to the table. Wow. Uh, I, you know, I'm not about tooting my own horn or nothing. Um, but what I bring to the table is a student of the sound of after seven that is still growing and still learning. Um, but because of them being a musical influence in my life, um, I was able to understand, you know, how, how to um, be subtle about singing, how to um, be a recording artist and not just a singer. Um, and, uh, you know, being in the studio, there were many times that no, no, no. There weren't many a times. There, there was this one time where they had to tell me to slow my roll because I started acting Wanye-ish and uh, all this other jazz or whatever. But, um, but you know, they was like, no, no, no slow your roll, baby. You got to you gotta sing to the ladies. You got you to gotta talk to them. You know, you got you got a story to tell, you know. And then Kevon would get up out of his seat and be like, <clears throat> let me show you better, I tell, better than I tell you. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, well, well, you know what it is, uh, Kevon, Kevon wouldn't do that much talking. He'd just be like, let me show you, you know, through his, through his actions. And um, Keith would be in my ear letting me know, you know, what I need to do. Um, but I was a fast learner. I, you know, that, that's a tough question. You know, I, yeah. I, I just think that I, I bring, <laughs> I bring the passion 
I bring passion um, to what's already been there. Um, I bring uh, care to what's already been there. Um, I bring um, the love of this thing called music, which has already been there to add and, um, and give to the people, you know? Okay. So it seemed like the, uh, the transition was pretty seamless. Uh, they welcomed you, kind of showed you how, I guess maybe if there's a such thing as an after seven way, you picked up on yeah. that right away and, um, and just, just kept the ball rolling. Most definitely. Most definitely. I mean, it, it helped when they were giving me the thumbs up, like what Kevon just did, you know, um, mm-hmm. but you know, yeah, yeah. That's what it was, man. Okay. Um, I know that everybody's in this um, global pandemic, you know, who knows when that's going to be over with. Um, have you guys done any, well, are you guys going to plan to do any kind of, any kind of dates? I guess that's kind of a hard question to answer right now because everything seems to be going back down to a lockdown. Uh, but what is the plan, let's say in the next few months, if any, um, or just kind of wait it out and see? Um, you know, what I can say is, um, you know, there, you know, everything is unpredictable. We, we, that we know for sure. Um, at one point, uh, we, we've been putting dates on the books, assuming that things are going to open up. I don't know if those things, uh, if that those things are going to actually happen, but there is interest in after seven performing in various markets and so on. Uh, and with fresh new music, I'm sure that is the catalyst as to why. Um, but we only hope that things calm down, you know, and that this doesn't get too out of hand and we don't find ourselves back in lockdown. Um, but it's, it's, uh, whether we get to get out there and perform or not, I think, I think uh, at the very least we can be satisfied and really, really, truly grateful for the fact that we have new music out there that I think is the kind of music that is carrying the kind of message that people need to hear in a time like this uh, where, um, you know, uh, we, we just need some hope. We need some feel good, you know, uh, because we've gone through so much over the last year and a half and it may not be over, but at least why something, something new that uh, will allow people to kind of connect to the human, human side of what, what we all are dealing with, you know? Agreed. Agreed. Um, Ask you a quick question about performing. I haven't had the fortune uh, uh, fortune yet to see you guys in concert. So if you guys ever make it to Southern California, let me know. Um, but is there, um, is there like a must do song or two that you have to do? Otherwise you'll cause a riot in the, in the, uh, in the arena <laughs> if you guys don't do a particular song. Well, if we wouldn't do ready or not, you know, that'd be a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that might be a problem. <laughs> yeah. Probably the same thing with Can't Stop, because both of those songs were gold singles. Um, but, you know, we, we often hear, I mean, we do, we have been blessed with a, an immense size catalog of songs. Yes, yes. And um, it, it is a good problem to have, but it is a problem because we often come into a marketplace, you only get 45, 50 minutes, 60 minutes to perform. So when you have a catalog like ours of singles, uh, a lot of them are going to get dropped. And they were great, great, great records. So, but uh, we, we try to find a way to work, work them back in, even if we can't do the whole song, we try to get a verse and a verse and a chorus in of a particular song, like a song like Till You Do Me Right, right now, we're, we're getting people, you know, kind of knocking us upside the head, you know, Till You Do Me Right, that's my song. But, uh, you know, it is a problem, but it's a good problem to have. I think we've created an even bigger problem with this unfinished business. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Like I said, I heard the first three and uh, man, uh, I can't wait to get the rest of the album. Um, speaking of your catalog, have you guys been approached about doing a, a versus since that's kind of um, a big thing right now? You know, there's, there's a lot of little talk in and around, but no one is actually approached us but you know i wouldn't be surprised if you know maybe a month or two down the road from now or so you know it may come it may come to fruition with whom i don't know but um you know uh we're just glad we're just glad to be still working we're glad to be 
relevant in the music scene right here today when you think about the fact that we've been around here for over 32 years and you know that we get to uh we we get to be on the airwaves and streaming at a time that really is is a time that belongs to brand new fresh new talent new artists and that uh our game is strong enough to have us still be in the mix so that's that's a blessing in and of yeah, itself absolutely yeah. yeah i appreciate you guys coming on the show today man i know you guys got a a ton of interviews to do. So I really, really appreciate you guys step uh, stopping Not by. Really. And I would encourage everybody to get the new album, which is going to be released on the 20th. Yes. And uh, August 20th. August 20th. Uh, you can pre-order your, well, like I said, by the time this airs, it'll already be out. Um, anything else you guys want to add before we, uh, be, oh, how can people reach out to you on social media? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You can reach out to us on you can reach out to us on our Twitter, on our Instagram, on our Facebook, including the website. And the tag that you want to you want to type in is after seven music. So it's after seven music.com, Instagram, Instagram.com in the search engine is after seven music, Facebook, after seven music. You got that. Matter of fact, to get the album, you can also go to our Instagram or the website. Click the link in the bio and it'll take you right to all the music platforms, Spotify, Tidal, uh, Apple Music to uh, go ahead and download and stream the album. And for those of y'all that are old school like myself, you want to uh, you want to uh, purchase the CD. You can also purchase the CD. So get that unfinished That's business right. after okay. seven. All right. Good, and then sale. Good sale. there. Yeah. All yeah. right. Good job. <laughs> and, and, and quickly, um, is there any music videos that are coming out that we should know about? Um, well, you know, uh, we have to make a determination of what is going to be the next single. So along with that, extra we'll mile. make it. A, we'll, extra we'll, mile. Uh, he, he says extra mile. Okay. Extra mile. <laughs> <laughs> extra mile. Yeah, well, 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 when we figure it out, there'll be. <laughs> when we it's figure a, it out, it's a subliminal. A it's a subliminal. It's a subliminal. It's a subliminal. <laughs> extra mile. Okay. Okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I kept listening to that over and over, and I told my wife, I said, "Wait a minute, hold on, my boys are back. Hold on, this is a, this is a good one right here." So, <laughs> right now, <laughs> yeah. Hey, fellas, appreciate it. Danny, Keith, Thank come you. on. Thank good you, luck man. with the album, man. Thanks, Thanks Todd. We appreciate, we appreciate, it. appreciate it. it. You guys take care. Thanks. All right, you too. All right, Peace. and that's after seven on the Bring Back Soul Music podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guests, uh, Tito Jackson and also After 7. You can find out more about After 7 on their website at after7music.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.